Welcome to our presentation. In this time of challenge with a global pandemic and climate change, this image created by John Hain reminds us that the world's health and well-being is in our hands. It's time to build an ethos of care by sharing our experiences and stories with each other. This is our story and we are happy to share it with everyone today as part of the OER20 conference. Though we are not physically together today, we are sharing these moments together and learning from each other about care in open educational spaces and places. Our story is one where an ethos of care surrounds our cross-cultural mentoring experiences through UNESCO's special project titled Open Education for a Better World. Our story is only one story that comes out of this project, but it is not that we feel is an important one to share. This story leads to the creation of new stories as a result of mentoring experiences. Hello, my name is Dr. Rekha Chavan and Assistant Professor at Department of Education, SNDT Women's University, Mumbai, India. And my name is Helen DeWard. I'm a special instructor at Lakehead University, teaching online courses in media and digital literacies, critical digital literacies, and located in Aurelia, Ontario, Canada. Here in Canada, as a means of demonstrating care and respect for First Nations peoples, I feel it's important to share this land acknowledgement since I am positioned on the land where I live and teach. This acknowledgement can model care and respect for First Nations peoples in all global contexts. Before we begin sharing our story, let's look at elements that make up an ethos of care. Neil Nordings has written extensively on this notion of care as a basic human element. Noddings suggests care is not gendered or domain specific, but relates to issues of human rights and a moral orientation. What we found interesting in Nodding's writings is the idea that caring is both sympathetic and empathetic in nature, that it is more about the affective than the intellectual. But also that caring is prompted by one being cared for. The idea that caring is about receptive attention is important when it connects to mentoring relationships. Caring benefits the protege as the cared for participant, but the disposition to act in a caring manner comes from the mentor. In mentoring relationships that truly work well, there develops a reciprocity in caring that is beneficial to both the mentor and the protege. In mentoring relationships, the caring is contextually connected to the environment of the mentor and protege. Noddings talks about caring as focused on self and other without necessarily being othering in nature. In our case, the mentoring relationship developed a sense of reciprocity where we both felt the vibrations of each other's needs and shared the control of caring for each other. As we work through problems together, I felt a sense of shared caring. Helen introduced me to new digital tools where I could learn to deliver online teaching, supported by her experience. In terms of an ethos of care, we are focusing on the caring relationship between mentor and protege in this presentation, but there were layers of care within this project. While we talk about our reciprocal relationship, we also focused on the care we received from the OE4 BW organizers, particularly in how they helped me get to Slovenia to present, present this project, but also the care we showed to the participant in the course we collaboratively designed. The OE for Better World is an international online mentoring program supporting the development and implementation of freely accessible modules and resources now in its third year. This UNESCO supported work is free to both mentors and mentees, uh, protégés, and concludes with a face-to-face -face experience where project developers meet and share their work. The project application must explicitly address one of UNESCO's sustainable development goals. The OE4BW team matches individual project developer with a mentor who can support their project to completion within the six months 
time frame provided. This presentation is a result of our mentor protege partnership from the 2019 OE4BW cohort. The project I planned was to design an online course about collaborative instructional design for academicians, educators in public system and higher education, corporate trainers and school managers. The emphasis of the course was on learning theories that impact classroom instruction, models of instructional design and instructional design for online learning. The course, Designing Collaborative Instructional Design with OERs, or DCID we called it, was developed and delivered in partnership where we designed the weekly outcomes, tasks, action items together. We negotiated into open spaces since this was new for Rika, so I guided her as we tried open tools together. For example, Padlet. When mentoring across cross-cultural context, Helen demonstrated care when facing challenges and assessing learning. Helen provided a direction for how to proceed and emotional support throughout this journey. Throughout the design and delivery of the course, I was very aware of the cultural context in which Rika was presenting the online course. I consciously separated my experiences from hers. Mentoring theory, outlined by Cram in 1983, suggests that mentoring occurs for career or psychosocial purposes, and that relationships evolve over time through these phases of initiation, cultivation, separation, and redefinition. And mentoring themes include trust, relationship building, and skill development. Yet these are frequently ill-defined in the literature in both duration and intensity. E-mentoring is impacted by the affordness and constraints of each digital tool or resource. The digital skills and fluencies of the mentoring diet and the shifting notions of temporality and rhythms of participation, as very well mentioned by Lorio and Alan in 2010. Openness in mentoring and mentoring in open educational spaces does not preclude the need to apply the principles of culturally integrated mentoring, as suggested by Geber and Keen in 2017. Their holistic model for mentoring is premised on the concept of Ubuntu, by defining mentoring in terms of a person in relationship with others. Each of these elements were present in our mentoring experiences together. We started by respecting each other's time and commitment to this project. Then we began building awareness of each other and eventually I felt comfortable enough to share cultural references with Helen, like my family celebration of Diwali and my niece's wedding ceremony. For example, we didn't find the best time to connect when we first started our relationship, but developed strategies like checking World Time Buddy and using email for messaging and sharing information. I asked Helen about WhatsApp, which is commonly used in India, as a based means of communication. This shifted the frequency and immediacy of our meetings. It helped strengthen our relationship. We primarily used Skype when we met. In this way, my care as a mentor was focused on being present to Rika, actively listening to her ideas, asking open-ended questions, managing my own emotions while still sharing my feelings, and providing feedback. These elements, as suggested by Sanyal in 2017, in an article about effective mentoring relationships, were essential ways I showed care for Rika and her project. I knew Rika was not on Twitter, but I wanted to share our experience with others in the wider open educational spaces about this project and the OE for Better World work we were doing to promote sustainable development goals. As a result of evidence of this care, I have since joined Helen on Twitter where she immediately introduced me to some of her network. Johnson, in 2017, presents a mentoring code of ethics, which we found interesting. While these ethical principles are inherently caring in nature, Johnson talks about a fiduciary responsibility when entering into mentoring relationships. 
This is in contrast to Nodding's notion of care as agapism, a moral imperative to love others in a selfless, charitable way. For my relationship with Rika, I was less driven by ethical principles and more under the sense of agapism as suggested by Nodding's. Our mentoring relationship grew and developed over time automatically as we demonstrated care for each other. In summary, an ethos of care in our cross-cultural mentoring experience included many of the concepts related by researchers and theorists in the field of mentoring and e-mentoring. As I researched and reflected, I realized that my relationship with Rika was an opportunity to share an example for others. It became less about the project we work on together and more about our relationship we had developed as a result of this mentoring experience. This mentoring relationship has transitioned to one of professional reciprocal relations, collaboration, where we continue to share our life and learning experiences. This is not to say that this ethos of care is solely other-focused. We see self-care as a critical element in the relationship between mentor and protege. Knowing that self-care is culturally and contextually defined, but has an underlying human understanding is an important point. In this time of global crisis, self-care is a means of caring for others. This legacy of care, as I experience in this mentoring project, is still continuing. These references are shared here, but are also available in the slide deck linked to this recording. Thank you for viewing our presentation. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us on Twitter. This presentation is licensed Creative Commons CC BY. And we appreciate the support of Slides Carnival and photographs from Unsplash.